Hello and welcome to Acupuncture Professional. It's Kath Perry here and today I have for you inspirational advice from Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. Mary Elizabeth Wakefield, AAAOM Educator of the Year, is an internationally recognised author, teacher, acupuncturist, craniosacral and shiatsu therapist, opera singer and flautist. She is a creator of innovative treatment protocols and writer for acupuncture periodicals, contributing significantly to raising public awareness of facial acupuncture as a viable, holistic treatment modality. Mary Elizabeth's book, Constitutional Facial Acupuncture, was published by Elsevier in 2014 and is already into its second printing. She has personally trained close to 5,000 acupuncturists and other healthcare practitioners from five continents and maintains a thriving practice in New York. Mary Elizabeth and her life and business partner, Michelangelo, are collaborating on a new book, Vibrational Acupuncture, Integrating Tuning Forks with Needles, for Singing Dragon UK, to be published in 2018. It's with great pleasure I introduce you to Mary Elizabeth Wakefield. Thank you, Kath. It's a great pleasure to be here, and I'm very grateful for acupuncture professional and all the wonderful work you're doing. So I'm really proud to be a part of this. Thank you so much. Oh. You know, one of the lovely yeah. things is I, I get to speak to so many different uh, practitioners at different stages in their professional journey. And, you know, it's always wonderful for other people to hear about what steps that you take in order to become a successful acupuncturist. So, you know, my question for you before we do get started is what, what actually made you decide to become an acupuncturist? Well, Kath, that... That is a good question, and it really goes back to my childhood. Growing up in a little town in Michigan, I, I had horrible allergies as a child, and I was very sick. I grew out of them by the time I was five, and I always had to be careful of foods. I had to be careful of what I ate. I learned much later that, um, that uh, there wasn't a consciousness around that. I didn't know that in, 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 in that time in that little village in Michigan. And um, so I, I started working with um, and being interested in complementary medicine, not Western medicine because it wasn't helping me And at that point in time. And the, 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 big, the big journey is this, when I, when I, I was ooh, 13 or 14, my father died suddenly and uh, went off to the hospital. Everybody thought he was all right, just having indigestion. And he actually died of a, a massive coronary at age 53. And that was the, the really the point, the, the most important uh, point in my life when I was asking questions in my grief, what, why did he die? What, what was really going on? Because there was a problem with what we now call Shu Li, X-U-L-I, which is the great low of the stomach. And it has to do with stomach heat over time damaging the heart. And at that time, the doctors didn't understand that. I'm not sure if they even do now, but Chinese medicine did. And so I went on my journey searching for different modalities to, to um, help me understand what happened and, and to not render me, uh, what can I say, helpless in that situation. And so I went and searched for, I studied shiatsu, I studied um, uh, massage, I studied cranial sacral therapy, polarity therapy, you name it. And and the when I was in Japan many year, years later, I was treated by some amazing, amazing Japanese acupuncturists and uh, very gently and very powerfully. And I promised when, uh, when New York State became licensed, I would also add that to my knowledge. And in in doing that, I knew I would find an answer. And I did. So I think a lot of us uh, make decisions when we're younger, something happens, and we decide that we are going to to look into that and find out what that was. And it, as I said, it was a huge, huge grief. And at the same time, it, it was advantageous in, in that, in a way that brought me to acupuncture. So, uh, and, and all that searching to find a way to work with people, to understand, to help people. Uh, and uh, that's kind of how it happened, that it was over the years, you know, searching. In the meantime, I was always singing opera. So I'm, I come from a background like my partner Michelangelo and colleague uh, as an opera singer. So amidst the asthma, I was singing and, and breathing and uh, um, also um, coming from the world of, of creativity at the same time. 
community. So. And, and what a wonderful combination of skills to sort of mix mix your expressive sound work yeah. with your, you know, the, the idea. Of, and I know a lot of the work that you've specialised yeah. in is around uh, facial acupuncture and obviously the face as the window yeah. to the soul and the expression of the yeah. emotions. So I'd love to hear about that journey you know, through music and through your, you know, your personal family story about how you moved in your career. Um, well, first of all, I, I always understood that, that any kind of change or any kind of success as a profession or as a, a, a professional acupuncturist comes from the journey within because it is a healing modality and uh, we are in the profession of, of health I always felt that that it was important to work with my my inner self my inner journey so any kind of outer strategies now that I or for success or my goals actually come from the inner journey and that wasn't always true um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd, 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 love, I'd love to hear more about that. This idea of that, and, and, and you say inner journey is that like an inner voice? Uh, how how would you best describe the inner journey and what that means, and, and perhaps examples of when you knew it wasn't to be true to know when it was? Ah, uh, that is a big question. When you know it wasn't true or was true, um, I I've always been very young, <laughs> and as a child, extremely young, and. Uh, uh, I've always been very much a doer and making things happen, my willpower. And at the same time, in the last, oh, I don't know how many years, I was always a, uh, a seeker. I was always looking for a, a way to deepen who I am, who I was, and to embrace a spiritual path. Now, I don't mean a religious path necessarily, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I mean a spiritual path. So, um, you know, one, I just have to tell you a story. I, years ago, I met um, and had, an, had a, a, what can I say, an appointment with Yoshi Danden, who is uh, the, the Dalai Lama's uh, doctor. And he had, well, an appointment. He had lines of people, hundreds of people waiting to see him. And I remember him taking my pulse, looking at my tongue. That was long before I was an acupuncturist. And he looked at me and said, Kath, uh, you are very young. I'm not giving you any pills, any med any herbs. He said, you go home, learn how to meditate and rest. <laughs> and of course, uh, many years later, I didn't listen to him. And, uh, and the last, I would say, I would say the last years, especially after writing my book, Constitutional Facial Acupuncture for Elsevier, a couple of years ago, I, I was exhausted. Uh, it was like giving birth, Kath, and I never have, you have, but it, it was exhausting and exhilarating. And I uh, realized I needed to, um, to uh, look into a way to be inner, more inner, to meditate. And I have been following that path for many years, but I really seriously decided to um, look into rest, meditation, stillness, calmness, and make, make that my first thing I did every day. No it's, matter where I am. It's, yep. it's interesting. You know, one, one of the things we've focused on more recently is the health of the practitioner. And it's looking yeah. at, you know, that there's a higher rate of burnout among clinicians all over the world, you know, from, from Western medicine. But of course, what we're seeing now is acupuncturists in private practice are starting to yeah. understand that burnout is a realistic issue. And, you know, it, it sounds is. like you really hit, hit a wall at that period. And, and you know, looking back, what would be your advice if you were to see an acupuncturist, you know, in yeah, a similar? Yeah, burned out. That, that's a good a, a thing. I, I would <clears throat> recommend that they they start to um, find a way to uh, meditate or be still. And I'm going to talk m more about other things that I've done with that. But meditation. I decided to join a a, a, um, a, a group of people, a community that I'd known 30 years before, and I had not. Uh, done any spiritual work with them in a long time and I reached out and I went to a seminar and 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 I have been part of this community now for a while and we they they support the whole idea of resting of of, of meditating discipline I I think that that acupuncturists who are burned out um, need to do quite a few things and I'm one of them I have been one of them one of the things is to 
have a place where you can be still, whether it is in nature or mindful walking, qigong, I would say meditation, deep breathing exercises, yoga, some place where they can go within and, and uh, I would say nature is one of the best places. When I meditate, I try to do that in nature, but it's very difficult in New York City, but I do find a park or some trees. But I would say it, it's very important to learn how to nourish one's yin. And I would say even more than that, to embody the yin, because that supports the yang, and that's really the center in the core. And I, I think that uh, uh, it's very important to to find a place where people can be still, to rest, to be quiet, to make something very important like meditation or or whatever touches them deeply, to learn how to nourish that yin or embody that yin in, in, in a way that I do. In fact, I this morning before I talked to you, I did my meditation, I did my chanting, I chant with it, uh, and then I did my qigong and I did my kundalini yoga. Mm, wonderful. So, and, and one of the lovely things, Mary Elizabeth, is that I know, you know, from your bio, that you know you've taught over four and a half thousand practitioners all over the world. What sort of things are you seeing? That gives you a wonderful bird's eye view of the profession. What's your opinion about about how the profession is evolving, and and perhaps strategies that people practitioners need, you know, in order in order to continue to make the profession grow and thrive. Well, I think the strategy, I mean, you're, you're looking at this as a whole. Um, the, the strategies are important, but the, one of the things I find in my teaching is that that place to go within is very important. Obviously, we have the yang, but to go within as far as, as that is concerned. I've, I've seen people in my seminars just recently go through uh, transformative, um, transformative changes with working with the face and the whole bo- whole body it's always constitutional um, I've seen them actually um, shift and change in a very profound transformative way and in that place they start to realize that they need to take care of themselves to really take care of their body and 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 their energy and who they are and I emphasize that uh, in our two-year gold standard which is coming up at Northwestern Health Sciences and University of Minnesota um, this um, this October. The people are together two years, and what you see there, working with the body, mind, spirit, the somatic, alchemical, and vibrational level, you see that people are going through profound letting go of things that they they realize they don't need anymore, detaching from things. I have a woman who who. Um, is a caretaker and felt that she couldn't come back because she should take care of everybody and then she got ill and she realized that she needed to take care of herself and ask for help. Now that's a big one when you're a caretaker and as professionals we tend to be have a bit of a caretaker mentality. We are caring for our patients, we're caring for our students when we're teaching. At the same time we need to take care of ourselves. So she realized that arranged everything, let go of it, and she's actually going to come and finish the last class. And I think I think the strategy, another strategy is to find ways to to take care of one's body and soul, to to be to be intimate, to go within. Once again, I'm not a person traditionally who with goes within very much. So I would say that the second strategy might be to um, to do something for oneself, to have a day as a practitioner or teacher to have a day off where they did nothing. I think that it's very hard just to do nothing, even if it's just a walk, mindful walking, just uh, or, or, or just resting or lying down or, you know, um, sitting in, 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 a, in a woods or sitting in nature. 
Don't you agree? I think it's very hard. Everybody's doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting you say that because, you know, we recently conducted a large survey of acupuncturists and, you know, I aggregated all the responses. And one of the things which recurred as a theme was that people were feeling anxious about their practices not busy, being busy enough. So there, there were sort of these, all these different elements which all sort of wove together. One of them was that they felt they, they wanted more patience. They felt that other professionals were encroaching on the turf of acupuncture. Along with that, they didn't feel validated as an acupuncturist. So it was this, there was almost like an inner turmoil of, firstly, we're not being recognised for what we do, but when we are, it's being taken from us. And, and so I think there's a little bit of friction and, and tenseness that's going on for, for some acupuncturists. And, yeah. and and I guess your advice about saying take a day off, I think would be difficult for those people who feel like they're, oh, they're struggling already. So how, how, do, how do you... Um, how do you integrate or con you know w yeah. weave those two conflicts together? One of the things I do here, I go with going within again, and I will address that is that I um, I always one of my vows or or one of my promises to myself is that I always want to embody and and embrace compassion, loving kindness, for, and forgiveness for myself and other people. And I, I mean that in, in a way of being compassionate and trusting that with with the self and kindness to the self and trusting that maybe maybe all things always shift. There's a problem with trust. Um, we constantly are out, 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 out. If we're in inner, more inner and meditating or looking at certain certain qualities that we'd like to see shift and change in ourselves, and we go inside instead of jumping out out of panic and, and reacting, um, things will change. You will get better ideas. You will, you'll think of a way to reach out which doesn't have to do with the fear of competition, the fear that the others are taking away their patience. It isn't about the other. It is about ourselves. That's and I, so, so I was going to have, have you had yeah. personal experience with that? Have you had a, had a struggle, a professional yes. struggle that you could share with us around when this when this strategy served you best? Well, one of the... I, I personally understand that, that place in acupuncturist and worry about not being recognized and worry about the competition, worry about uh, being out there, worried about not working, worried about bringing money and it becomes uh, a survival issue. And what I have done and been forced to do is learn how to trust and 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 take when 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 that happens because I am I am I do we do work for ourselves I do work for myself, so I've been able to to in my many years of working realize that this is maybe the time to rest and to go within and to plan and to do other things. There's also also that place of fear. And um, it isn't outside us. We can be aware of what's going on, but it, it, it's taking that time to go inside, even, even for a half day, to be quiet, and then you'll get new ideas. You're rested. You're not coming from panic. Um, it's not the other person that's doing it to us. And I've had situations where I've had people literally be so, uh, well, I hard to say on the webinar, but they've been very jealous and um, they have tried to to hurt my my uh, my career, and it was a serious thing. This was many years ago, and I had to deal with that. And I went into extreme anger, rage, and grief, and it was very uh, very um, hostile, and um, it was a jealousy, and it was a misunderstanding, and I tried to talk to the person I but what I decided to do is was to take care of myself to clarify around me what was going on and to continue on and not to focus on that negativity to be aware of it but to move beyond it and I think it made me stronger and made me realize that I cannot pull myself out of my cent center like that although it was a very painful experience very painful so that's one. That was in the beginning of my career, and uh, it was uh, a hard one, but I, I learned that hard lesson to stay with myself, to always be generous, to always be aware and clear, and to come from a place of compassion and letting go. And that's very hard. It's hard to live that, 
Detachment is another thing. Detaching oneself or letting go of of the blind spots that we have and the shadows that we have within ourselves and projecting it on others. You know, we do that as well. So I think that the challenge is to really stay with oneself, be aware of what's going on, and perhaps have a community of people, like-minded people that can support us, like you. Like, like, like what you're, I look down, you're up here, <laughs> sorry. Um, like you, Kat, you are creating a network of support for acupuncture professionals. And you are in having a safe place for us to talk about this to reach out to each other, to you're putting together experts that can talk about their experiences and hopefully somebody or some someone may glean a little bit from what I have to say. Compassion for oneself and others and forgiveness, letting go, letting go. And it's not just, just thinking compassion, it's embodying it. I think for me, my whole life, I've been longing to be embodied, to not just talk about these qualities, but to be them. And it takes a long journey, a long time to come to that place, and maybe we just have glimpses of it. But we, if we all were able to body, embody these qualities, to transform ourselves, literally transformare is a Latin verb, which means to change something into something else. So if we were able to shift and change the way we look at things, the way we feel, the way we know things, we're able to embody this transformational energy. We can be it in our DNA. They talk about that when they talk about the eight extraordinary meridians. They talk about the ability to embody that energy. You know, we are, it's our DNA, but to embody um, the energy of, of longevity, and, uh, and, and the energy that we have on our path and our learning path. Detachment's a hard one. That's one of my hardest to let go. I have trouble letting go. Kat, mm. Kath, do you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, interestingly too, in, in everything you're saying resonates and I, and I appreciate you, you sharing with us these pearls of win wisdom from your very long and successful career. And I guess my, my question for you, and I'm thinking, I guess, from the perspective of uh, perhaps a younger practitioner or somebody who's newly graduated, yeah. because one of the things that we've identified, again, in long conversations um, you know, and the survey that we conducted recently is a lot of practitioners are suffering very quietly and, and very isolated from a lack of confidence. And uh -huh. that, yes. you know, what I think, I, I think that what we do in our schools is we give these, we, we give our students this incredible toolkit. And we say, there's, you know, here's a toolkit with 2,000 pieces. Now go, mm -hmm. and, go and build a house or go and set up a practice, go and run a business. And I yeah. think, you know, the, re the reality is what we've done is we've made it more difficult because for a lot of people, it's, you know, where do you start? Where, where do you start? How do yeah. you how do you convert that very first patient into a full you know into a fully thriving business, and and I guess you know confidence and that 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 inner belief yeah. in yourself. But yeah. you know, have, have you ever struggled with lack of confidence? I have, and I I wanted to say something about that because I see that all the time when I'm teaching students, or students who have just are about to graduate, or have just graduated, or just taken their boards. They are not sure how to proceed and how to go forward. And that's one of the things we address in my, my seminars. I literally talk to people about that and, and how it was for me. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I, I really uh, provide a safe haven for them. We, we discuss how business strategies, um, that they can start with the facial acupuncture, it usually will bring them patience and 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 I talk to them about how I started um, I we keep we keep in touch with these people we refer them out to patients because because we have a, a huge referral website a huge referral international you know when they become mm. and, and I love I love that idea too that you know one of the challenges with being an acupuncturist is ultimately you know that, that there's an expression of you know jack of all trades that we, we are told yeah. acupuncture treats everything therefore you can treat anyone mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. while, while I think that's a wonderful gift, it's also very debilitating because, again, and I see this in, in you know, working with um, fourth-year students who have this right. sort of, oh, my God, where do I go? Where, you know, what yeah. direction should I go in? And do, do I specialise, even though that word is fairly um, 
you know, I, I think gravitate towards what you're passionate about is, is a better word to, to yes. specialise. But, but obviously with your constitutional facial acupuncture, you're giving people a very niche market in which to start, mm. of which to build their practice and, Do you um, think people should specialise, Kat? I see, no, I, 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 that's why I, I, um, I don't like the word specialise because I think it comes but from the Western medicals. So, I, but, yeah, so, so gravitate, towards your, to, gravitate towards what you're passionate about. That I use, exactly. I use the word specialise in that sense of what I don't think is I don't think it serves practitioners well to put a sign up saying I treat everything and everyone. I think that, mm -hmm. that, that sort of one size fits all actually mm -hmm. it doesn't resonate with our patients, that you're much better off saying, I treat you know, women with X conditions or you know, being, yes. being far more specific about the things that you like treating. And so, so tell me then about, you know, the, about your journey then. You were saying how... You know, well, I, I, just, I just wanted to say that I also suffered from um, lack of confidence, but you said the word passion, ka -ching. That is the word, being excited about it, being passionate, and being passionate about what they would like to do and what they gravitate toward. And I think that makes a huge difference because my passion and love for what I was doing, the, the facial acupuncture and acupuncture, far overrode any, any lack of self-confidence. I, I, I immediately decided, okay, I converted all of my massage patients, some of them left, I had massage patients, into acupuncture patients. I did integrate, I still do, uh, but I don't give full massage, it's, it's too exhausting and there are other people who do that, but I, I, I integrate certain treatments with it, but I decided that that because I was a performer all my life and my face was always forward and singing and, and people wanted to look good in front of the public but more than that I knew that it housed all the emotions of the face the shen the spirit so I immediately changed I, I immediately converted my patients and started to to work and uh, the minute I got licensed to do acupuncture and then I said because I, I love to teach I am going to teach now that took a lot of what we call in New York chutzpah which which means a lot of so what I did is said, where do I want to go? And I decided that where are the most acupuncturists and where would it be nice to also be outside of New York City? So I, I targeted California. So I, I went, I, I, I just called them up and sent them an email and a letter and I said, I would like to teach at your school. And I ended up being sponsored by a woman who found me in Oakland, and then ACTCM, and the AISMC Berkeley, then Santa Barbara when it was there. And I just jumped in because it was like the fool in the tarot deck. I was standing, you know the fool that stands on the, 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 the uh, ridge of the mountain and doesn't even look down, just jumps off. So I jumped off, and it, everything shifted. Because of that love of the medicine and because of the passion, that is the word. And am I correct in thinking that because you gave yourself the quiet time to listen to the inner voice to know what that calling was, that perhaps practitioners that are struggling right now might just have too much noise going on in their head that they need to take some time out to, to really tap into who they are bef well, so that they have that calling? Would that, would that yeah. be a fair...? Yeah. Kath, you know, at that time, I wasn't listening to much. I was <laughs> not doing my meditation every day. I just followed my passion at that time. I think that, yes, the noise, the passion overrode everything, to be honest with you. Brutal honesty, it was passion and love of what I do. Um, but I think that, yes, it would help people to quiet the noise. But if you're not loving what you're doing, if you're not passionate about it, and when you speak with people, you, you don't express your excitement and explain what you're doing. And I, I think that, that that is an issue. Uh, that is a problem. I think self-confidence shifts as we really acknowledge what really gives us joy and passion and excitement, and which, which really is, as you said, gravitate. I think it's even... Gravitate is good, but even more so, what we just are pulled, I, you're right, pulled toward. And so I think that everybody, I agree with you, should look into what really, really, really um, makes them sing, what makes them joyful, what makes them grateful. 
um, it's I think that's an inner thing and I, I think it yeah it probably be best to to take mindful walking or or, or yoga or, or to meditate or all of the above qigong and get within to, to, to go within but the problem is that that worry I mean if the, the whole idea of compassion and taking care of oneself how how not to um, how to be gentle with yourself that's a hard one too and it is one of the things I, I really 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 feel strongly about is helping young acupuncturists when they get out of school or they're about to graduate we we talk to them constantly we we, we recommend them uh, for uh, for to patients uh, people email us we recommend them right away uh, we constantly answer the questions on the email we try to support them and I, I talk to people all the time giving them ideas how to start how, how just start there what 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 excites you I mean Kath tell me what excited you Look, it's such a um, I, they're very, very it? similar but see I I love I think I was born to be a librarian I love I love not. I love not necessarily knowing stuff, but knowing where to find information. And I think coming, you know, coming from, you know, I, I was thinking about the passion. I love. I love building a network. I love knowing that all I, you know, all I have to do if I want to know anything about facial acupuncture is, is send a quick email to Mary Elizabeth Wakefield in New York, and just feel. Yeah. That, you know, and, and and of course, I feel blessed that I've been born in a time with that. My, I started my acupuncture degree in 1995 which, as you remember, was actually the day that the internet, the, the year the internet was launched. So I feel like my acupuncture career was actually in parallel with technology, with, with this new technology. So I feel it was sort of destined, a bit like you with your music going on in the background of your acupuncture career, I feel like technology has been in the background of mine. But you know, before we do finish up today, yeah. you know, is, is there any other key messages that you'd like to share with our audience? And again, the people that I feel that everything you're resonating and, and the, the words, you know, follow what makes your heart sing, I think is one thing that we can take from today is, is, is a fabulous uh, you know, pearl of wisdom from you. But what would, you know, what would be your advice to people, the people that are t watching today that feel they're watching this webinar because they're in that funk of, of just can't mm -hmm. quite, just feeling, a lot of students feel like they've been sold a dud. They're you know, incredibly in debt. They've got this it's a qualification which is half recognized and, you know, it's, it's, what, what's your pep talk to the acupuncture well, profession? Well, the, the pep talk, a lot of students are, are graduating from acupuncture school and going on for doctorate. And uh, the schools in the United States have a lot of doctoral programs and they're excellent. But then they've been in school, school, school. So how do they get out and start practicing? And how do they have the time to do that? That's my, my question. Um, I, I think that there's so much education going on that people haven't gotten their feet wet out in the world and, and practicing and, and teaching or, or seeing patients or whatever they're doing. I, I, I would just say to people to, as you said, what makes your heart sing, but also it is, they're, they're being, you're talking about um, the whole World acupuncture, Kath, or, or Britain, or, or the, UK? Just, just generally, every, you know, the new practitioners. Yeah, so, so the idea that... Um, oh, that, that, yeah. That's a hard one. We're, we're, I've noticed in, in acupuncture schools, it's changing a bit, but uh, practitioners or students are not being taught how to market themselves. There are books out there, but the chiropractors I noticed in the United States learn that right from the get-go, and they never have trouble trouble asking for what they're worth or money or understanding how to get patients, how to keep patients. They're taught that. Not, I'm not saying that we should do that the same way, but I think there needs to be more education in the school about business and uh, how to, a uh, business also, but how to find what makes your heart sing. What, how, what, what are you drawn toward? What, 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 what do you want to do? I knew, I always knew I wanted to sing and I just did. And I still do. And I always knew I wanted to be, um, be um, uh, an acupuncturist. I always knew that I wanted to teach and have patience. And I always wanted to work with uh, the face, with the shen, with the spirit. I knew that. I, I work with other things too, tendon and muscular issues, etc. But I think, I think that it's important for um, for people coming out of acupuncture school to realize that I. They need to find what what makes 
what what touches them at a deep level and how to do that and I think they ought to find a way to work with people who, who can help them with the business side of it with a very conscious bent a very conscious thrust mm. and indeed that's in, that's in fact something we at active Bunch professional are dedicated to in the, in, in the you know, oh, future good. is to make sure that we good. use we use this technology as a way of actually bring, firstly bringing people together and then good. secondly providing those foundation skills to, to grow a business and grow confidence you know so that, you, that people do charge what they're worth exactly. but my final question for you then is you know yeah. given, given you've had this incredible journey you know and it's sort of it's not just a career it's been a livelihood it's been a passion it's been a hobby all, all of the things you've done what's and what's next and, yeah, and, what's, and what's next on the horizon for you what's uh, what have you got your question. sights on ah uh, uh, the question uh michelangelo and i are writing a book it'll come out in 2018 uh a new one on a new topic it's called vibrational acupuncture integrating tuning forks with needles in other words we're integrating sound and and everything that that pulls us together with the music sound and the history of, of music and sound uh, for healing will be in the book based on Chinese medicine and other other um, other historic um, uh, cultures and so that's exciting singing dragon is publishing that in the UK and uh, we signed the contract and it's coming out in 2018 vibration like so, so wonderful. and what a wonderful and celebration of everything you do it's, yeah. it's 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 I mean what it does it sounds like it's the perfect you know that the, the as as you say it's sort of like the the perfect celebration of everything that you love so in fact you are following your own advice in following your passion yes and uh, doing what makes you sing and then obviously sharing yes. that with the world is don't you know is to make sure that you take it bigger and beyond so look thank you so much Mary Elizabeth Wakeful is there anything, I just yeah, yeah, yeah is there anything yeah. else of course uh, yes I would like to invite any acupuncturist or students. To, um, to get a hold of me if they want to talk any further about this. And I also want to let them know that, um, that uh, I believe in generosity of, of, of spirit and giving back. And I would be very happy to speak with them or to um, hear from them and with any questions that they feel like asking me. But I think, Kath, you pretty much got it covered here with all your Educational. And do you know what's really exciting? And I'll let, I'll let our audience in on a little secret is, is my plan for the future is to look at how we can use this technology for mentoring and peer support. So it's going beyond the Wonderful. webinars and, and as you say, just and, and going beyond private emails between practitioners and students, but to, to actually say, how can we use this technology yeah. for mentoring and peer support. So thank you so much. I'll, I'll, be, calling, I'll be calling on you for one of our, for our mentorship program. And thank, thank you again you. For, thank you again for your generosity you today. So and, uh, you also. And, and, and you know, sharing, sharing that journey because it is inspirational. So thank you, Mary Elizabeth Wakefield, and uh, for that wonderful offer for people to make contact and reach out to you as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye now.